Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, let me show you seven tips to shoot uh, a better time lapse of the sunset or sunrise. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I hope you're doing well. My name is Mattia. I'm a professional time lapse and hyper lapse photographer living in Madrid and uh, let's go straight to the first point thinking ahead so normally to shoot a sunset we will take you at least two hours so knowing what is going to happen around uh, your spot it's very important so for example check uh, that uh, you are far enough from uh, street lights that can ruin uh, your shot when they turn on or don't stand in a place where people will pass in front of the camera for example once uh, I started a time lapse near a bin in the street and while the sunset was happening a worker came in and emptied the trash and got in the middle of the frames for 10 images and he ruined the time lapse so that day I learned to stay away from the trash bin. Tip number two, choose the right interval. This is very important, it will determine the speed and the dynamic of uh, your time lapse. So if you're shooting with a 15 second interval and the sky fire up with a lot of colors, you will see it only for one or two seconds the final time lapse. Instead, with the same sunset, if you shot it with uh, a four second interval, then uh, the color will last uh, at least 10 seconds. And to master it, you need to make some mistakes. So don't be afraid to, to experiment. Tip number three, use variable ND filters. If you're shooting in the city and in your shot uh, you have uh, traffic or people close to the camera, you want to concentrate to use a variable ND filter so you can have a motion blur during the day and when it gets dark, manually decrease the, in the intensity of the ND. But you need to consider that um, your shutter speed at the end will be quite long, so be careful choosing the right interval. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, it will mean the world to me if you smash the like button and share the video to someone that might find this tip helpful. Thank you so much. So tip number four, shoot in manual mode. I would highly recommend to shoot sunset and sunrise in manual mode when the light and the contrast between shadow and highlights is very extreme. For example, if you're shooting a sunrise inside a cave looking outside, the cave is going to be very dark and the outside will be very bright. So if you let the camera do the work, it can easily mess it up. But uh, if you are in control, you know how the shot is going to be exposed. Shoot in aperture priority mode. On the other hand, if you have a new mirrorless and the sunset doesn't have a lot of contrast, let the camera do the work so you can enjoy the sunset without touching the camera. And of course, you need to trust your gear. I wouldn't shoot um, in aperture priority if the camera doesn't know how to run the exposure properly. I only started shooting AV mode with the Sony A7 III and I wouldn't touch the AV mode with the A7 II or with the Canon 60. Set the exposure compensation. If you decided to shoot in AV mode, then you need to set exposure compensation. I will normally leave it at zero because my camera can read quite well the light, but if I'm shooting a sunset of the skyline, I will put it at uh, minus 0.7 or even at the minus one. So I'm sure that I can recover the highlights. Use apps to help predict colors. These days there are a bunch of apps that can tell you if the sunset is going to be epic or not. And these apps can be so helpful when planning a shoot. I mostly use Skyfire, which you can find it inside the Photographer Ephemeris on uh, iOS or a separate app uh, on Android. If you want a free version, check out uh, my Sunset Alp and Glow or the website uh, called Sunset WX. And last, let's say a bonus tip for you that stayed until the end. I know it can be a, a bit of cliche, but experiment and shoot a ton. Everyone start from zero. So the more you shoot and make mistakes, the more you will improve and learn from it. I made so many mistakes on my career and still making it, but I learned from them and got better and better. And that's it, let me know what you think. I hope you found some of the tips helpful. And if you want to learn more in details how to shoot time lapse, make sure to check out my book, Mastering Time. I have it in English, Spanish, and Italian. And uh, there is a printed version is also available on Amazon right now. So thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao ciao!